All right, welcome everybody. Uh, do we have folks here yet? Um, I'm going to take a look at the participant list. We have three attendees. Welcome Amy, Tim, and Tom. And Paul, good. We're trying to get folks filtering in. Excellent. All right, we'll wait a little bit for folks to come on in. Right. Okay, so we have five attendees so far. We'll wait another little minute to see if we get any more folks most of we had 30 people sign up but most of them are going to be watching the recording all right oh hi paul hi amy All right, I think we can get started now and um, people as they join in will see what we have. All right, so welcome to everyone. We are here to learn how to run a winter walk to school day event. And that's gonna look very different for different people. I will, when I saw the sign up, saw a lot of people uh, having some questions about doing uh, a, an altered uh, winter walk to school day event. And we will talk a little bit about ways you can adapt the program to better fit your school's needs. So today we will have uh, Peter Lowry coming from Central School, Mitch Crave from St. Albans City School, Devin Barber Campbell uh, from Locomotion, uh, Melanie Kepler should be joining us, and um, I am Mary Catherine Graziano, the Senior Education Manager for Locomotion. We are um, going to talk about how to run an event, how to get people engaged, how to engage volunteers and other partners, how to make the event a success in, in all of its forms. We also will share with you our um, on our resources that we have built and will continue to add to as we grow the program and learn more about what people need. So we are still waiting on Peter. So I think what we will do is I'm going to just check to see if I'm able to see him. All right, so I think we'll start with Mitch's presentation. Uh, but before, actually, before we do that, I apologize. We are going to talk about how to control your screen. So there are, uh, your screen may look something like this. There may be some differences. Hey, Melanie. Um, but the icon should remain the same. We have the mute button here. Everyone should be automatically muted. We have a question and answer panel. We have a chat if you just want to have a little just side discussion with folks. Uh, uh, you might be able to raise your hand and speak. We'll see if that works. We did have enabled uh, closed captioning, so you can actually read what people are saying on the screen if you are, like me, uh, a little bit challenged with the hearing piece. All right. So without further ado, I think we're going to start with Mitch's program, and I'm going to give Mitch remote control. There you go. Thank you, Mary Catherine. Um, you. I appreciate your, you know, everybody coming to to hear what we do at City School for our winter walks. What I want to say first of all is that we integrate the City School winter walks right into our other you know, warmer weather month walks. Uh, so they're just kind of part of the whole plan rather than something really special. But um, 
let me introduce you to the school. And Mary Catherine, I don't know if you can adjust the size of this. A little bit's cut off in terms of, yeah. It does not look like I can make it smaller for whatever reason. Mitch, you're on mute. Go on to the next slide for me, if you would. Okay. All right, St. Albans City School is located in the city of St. Albans, which has about 7,000 people. And the main elementary school for the community has maybe 750 students and about 100 or more staff members. We're surrounded by the town of uh, St. Albans, which has its own kind of government and equivalent and number of students, but we both have walking Wednesday programs. Um, can we go to the next slide? Our uh, walking Wednesday program involves 16, maybe 17 walks over the course of a school year. So you can see with the blue chart there, we have like uh, one in September, uh, four or five in October, then we go to one each month until we get to May and we have four or five there. Uh, I've finished with a very large one typically in June. And we do this with seven routes around the city. Uh, the Northwest Planning uh, Center in our uh, community helped us come up with a map and uh, the safe routes to school person, Abby Matera, way back when, helped us organize the best routes to sort of integrate getting all the students to school. So we, we've got a map that we use and modify occasionally. Each of the seven routes has two adults and maybe more. And we only lead the walking Wednesdays to school, not going home. So that, that's the basic gist of it. And you can notice that we do have, you know, December, January, February, March. Those are all wintry months um, that we, we have a walk. The next. In order to, um, kind of promote our program and get a lot of buy-in by students. We have two ways of uh, sort of announcing this to people. One is that we put together a flyer each year with all the dates, the routes, the incentives that are offered for those who participate and uh, when we're gonna actually not have the walk if the weather conditions are bad. And the really nice thing is, is that we've connected with our local hospital who does all the printing for us and actually makes these flyers. So I provide the information and one of the staff members there creates the flyer that we then give to every student and it gets posted in every classroom. So that's one thing. So if we go to the next page here, um, you'll see what else we do to kind of sell what, what happens. Our school um, has a digital daily announcements in which I'm in charge. And this gets put out, you know, five days a week. Every student and staff member sees it in the morning first thing, because that's where all the content for the day, the sports activities, the major events are listed. Any photographs that have been taken around the school are shown. Um, we have a very important dates kind of section that comes at the beginning, and that's where we list all of our walking Wednesdays. So um, the day before an event, we show uh, that it's coming up with pictures and we also you know, list the map so that people have no excuse for having lost the map. They know where to be and when to, to join up with a walking school bus. And then perhaps just as importantly as all the kind of putting it into our dates for, for planning for this is as soon as the event is over, the next day will show a lot of like the results, uh, how many people walked, which ones walked from which group, uh, and, and then lots of pictures. So if we could go to the next slide, you'll see that. 
So our school is divided up into these learning communities of about three classrooms per learning community and roughly 60 to 75 kids per learning community. And they all have different names. And so you can see when kids come in, they tell which community they're from. So it gets checked off on a list and we know how many dreamers there were or how many from Team USA or whatnot. And this gets put into a graph. So every time there's a walk, they see this, they can see in a way how they're competing against the other groups. And we like to recognize the top um, performers. Um, all right, so next. Every walk we have uh, pictures that are taken from as many routes as we can reach so that the kids will see themselves in the announcements um, the next day. And these announcements are not just going to classrooms, but are sent in emails. They go to Facebook and to Twitter as well. So if a parent wants to know what's going on with their kids, they can certainly get pictures that they can download and use for themselves if they want. But So kids love seeing themselves in photos <laughs> when they're younger, at least. And uh, it does help kind of promote this. So next, uh, more pictures, the better. And on to the next one. So who do we get to lead these? Uh, we've gradually <laughs> learned that we pretty much have to rely on our staff members. Uh, they're invested in the school, they're going to the school, they won't be disappearing for whatever reason. And so I do a recruitment over the summer to try and find people who will lead these 16 walks throughout the year. And there's always been a request for more Walking Wednesdays, but I really feel like I'm burdening the teachers enough with this responsibility. And it's, it's hard to recruit when they wanna to get to school, get their classroom open and be preparing for students rather than out there walking. But this community that you're seeing right in front of us has four teachers from five that are helping to lead. That's really wonderful. And they have one of the best participation rates as a consequence. So next, sometimes we get parents. I can usually count on anywhere from two to six each year joining in and they're a real help. So um, I put out an announcement asking for their assistance and then I just kind of keep an eye out for anybody that seems to be walking their kids regularly and recruit them, give them a vest and make them feel a part of the, the deal. So next. Uh, we try to involve kind of celebrities to make it a little more interesting. Um, you know, we've invited the mayors, they've come many times. Journalists who might write about it. Uh, the Vermont Guard, our school is kind of tight with the military in some ways, so they're willing to come and join in. Uh, one of our parents is the Bird Diva, you may have heard of her locally, and she walks great with kids. And in the past, we used to have officers that occasionally joined us. Um, I don't think that's gonna be part of the program anymore because we used to have a safety officer here and that's been deleted. <laughs> so, um, but some kids liked it and some did not. So on to the next. We tried uh, expanding our program beyond the walking Wednesdays to have students in the you know, maybe the warmer months of the year, in the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, lead daily walking, you know, Wednesdays, but just daily walks. And I just learned the hard way that I, I'd have to have like four on a, on a route just to be able to be assured that I would have two leading, one at the front and one at the back. And even then it was really problematic. So I Love having them along. I give them vests to use, but I'm not going to count on them as being in charge. And also, uh, parents felt reluctant to turn their kids over to other kids rather than adults. So, fair enough. Next. The incentives we've offered are mostly on the right hand side of the screen. We make our own stickers, we get some from Local Motion. We've gotten goodies like pencils, we've bought our own pencils. This year, we're giving out these little plastic foot tags. If you get 13 out of 16 from the walks, one each walk, you can earn a metal water bottle. 
Um, the drinks on the left, we've tried those occasionally. We make our own cider sometimes, or hot chocolate, tea. It's just a bit of a burden to organize that as well as everything else. Kids are rushing to get to classrooms and it, it's turned out for us that it's not a necessary incentive. These other things, the stickers and the pencils, whatever, those are great. Next. So we do occasionally cancel. I can think of maybe three times in the last nine, eight, nine years we've been doing this. Uh, that we've had to cancel because it's been too cold, below 10 degrees. And uh, when the sidewalks are just like glazed ice and it's just clear that it's not a safe thing. But most of the time we're out there uh, and people just know it's gonna happen and the teachers know that they have to be out there. It's just the expectation and, and we get it done usually. So, so next. This is the last. Uh, we've been going since 2013, and the expectation is that there will be winter walks. It's just the normal thing. Uh, we didn't have it last year, but every other year we've been rolling. And we typically get about 70 to 110 people involved, including the adults that lead. That's uh, not a gigantic number. It's about half what we get in the warm months but it's way better than it was. When, when I started this program, nobody almost walked to school. I, I made my son do it, he was in fifth grade, and he was angry with me because he was weird, the only guy that was <laughs> going. And now we get you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 kids walking year round, even in winter. Um, that's, it feels like we're making progress because it's such a car and bus culture. It's, yeah, not bad. So that's our program. And I know that Vermont is different everywhere. So it may not be what works for you, but yeah. So thank you for listening. All right, thank you so much, Mitch. You have a long standing and very successful program. Uh, there was a question from Tom. Are there any buses in St. Albans? Have you ever integrated biking into these days? What grade levels are in your school? And have there been any changes with COVID? <laughs> uh, let me ask, answer the last one first. This year, our program is the same it has been before the pandemic. So we're, we're it's just last year when it was canceled entirely that it was a problem. As far as buses go, that's been a really sore point. In order to build a consolidated school, our district had to promise to provide busing because when the school was built, there was a lot of railroad activity here, which is no longer present. And um, so kids and their families expect to bus, even though we have sidewalks, which is very unusual for Vermont and kids live within a mile to two miles of school. There's no excuse for not being able to walk. Kindergartners and pre-K kids walk to school with our groups. So it can be done, but it's, it's sad. A lot of cars, a lot of busing. What did I miss? Uh, the grades in your school. Uh, the grades are pre-K through eighth grade, and we get more participation the older the kids have gotten which is understandable considering parents feel more comfortable with them going. But also we've been going for so long now that kids that are in eighth grade, you know, they were here in kindergarten and they know that it's normal and they see kids walking every day. So it is the norm, not an unusual weird thing. They grew up doing it. And, and I think um, Tom also asked if you've integrated biking. We, um, don't recommend biking. Some kids do. Uh, the, we certainly promote biking in other ways. And we have occasionally offered bike to school days, but those have been pretty poorly, <laughs> not many kids have shown up for them. And we just kind of feel like it's not worth the trouble. We do provide bike racks. We um, do biking education, other things. So they, they get other biking promotion. And we have a fair amount of bikes every day, even in winter. 
Awesome. Great. Um, and then uh, one last thing from Melanie. Um, and actually, I think Kevin also asked the question. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, Melanie asked, have you ever organized remote bus dropouts during these block days? Uh, yes, we have. Um, we, we have one giant walk to school day at the end of the school year. And so <laughs> sometimes we have made it where we've had a local church um, be willing to sort of be a, a site where parents can drop off kids or buses can drop off kids there and then they can walk the half mile to school. So it's not intimidating for them and it's on a safer route than maybe in some of the other locations. So I think that's a good solution. For the rural school areas, one, one thing we did with our bikers is we got the police involved. So we had a police car behind and in the front, and then you can lead them on the way to school, even on a busy road, lights flashing, and just you know, have them dropped off a half mile away and they get the experience. So, yeah. I, I know that um, also for biking, I know St. Elvis City School does a big, like, uh, grade wide event for sixth grade, uh, big biking trip that um, True. they can be during as a focal point for that group yeah. yep. uh, in the year celebration. They, they do a big barbecue and play volleyball and stuff. Uh, how far is the bike ride? It's really long. It's 11 miles out, and, and many of them bike back too. So for them, that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, I went on it once. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a great trip. Awesome. Thank you. I think um, Kevin had a few questions too. Do you do a permission slips for parents? On no. The box? Nope. Um, it's pretty clear from our media that this is totally voluntary and parents can certainly join in and be there with their kids walking in if they want, but otherwise they're turning them over and they feel comfortable with it. They do not have to participate. There's no pressure to do so. so yeah. And uh, Bevan also asked if there was a stipend for your walk bike leaders. No, there's not. Um, this is strictly voluntary. And so that's a real gift from all these folks. I try to thank them every time and uh, make them know that they're making a difference in our students' lives, but that's all they get, so. Yeah, it's a little harder to recruit that way. <laughs> the warm fuzzies. That's that. Yeah. You're getting the ones who care. Awesome. Any other questions for Mitch before we move to Peter? All right. So um, some people are having trouble with my audio, so I'm going to try to do as little talking as possible. I'm just going to cue up Peter. Right. So somebody was saying that it was actually harder to um, see the screen when I had it full screen. Is this better? It's good. Okay. So I'm going to let Peter talk. And Peter, you just tell me when you want me to advance. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Glad to be here. Um, I teach at Central School in Bellows Falls, Vermont. I've been there for a few years. and. Uh, I have uh, scheduled walk to school days since about 2007. And when I first did it, I had three different walking locations with two teachers going to each walking location, meeting students there. And then we went to, we gradually went to one walking location. It was a bit more exciting having a, a bigger group of kids at uh, one spot. So for a while now, maybe eight years or so, we've done uh, one walking location for um, the, the, the first Wednesday in each month. So we can go to the next slide. That's just a picture of one of our winter walks and uh, the, the staff in my school have been really willing to uh, join each grade and uh, it's a drop-off spot about a quarter mile away from my school. 
And uh, some parents walk, other parents um, will just pull up with their car and drop kids off. Um, we've, I usually have around 50, but I haven't started walk to school days up again yet since COVID. Um, that's going to start soon. But I've had close to 100 in uh, months like October and June, really popular months to walk. And then um, as low as like 20 students if it's around 10 degrees in February, like Mitch was saying. <laughs> but it's still fun. All right, next. So to keep things somewhat organized, I have little signs and each grade has their own sign. Um, I teach in a K through four grade stool, uh, school. Um, so there's, there's five signs and a student usually holds uh, their grade sign. And then a staff member or a student keeps track on a clipboard um, of which students are there. And that helps with keeping track of their numbers of which students have walked and helps keeping track of um, who's walking with us just for accountability. Uh, we can go to the next slide. I've tried various awards and uh, this one that you see on the right is one that has worked pretty well. It's just a, a simple word document. And I just, I just recognize classes for their um, participation. So this, this class in 2017 had, had nine walkers and uh, that was 64% of their class. And so they had this, this little sheet on their, their classroom door. And at the end of the, the day, um, I would recognize um, the top, top three classes with the greatest participation. Um, and they're usually any um, competition that, that um, didn't go so well was between teachers and not kids. So the kids were always fine with it. But some of the classroom teachers um, were a bit too competitive occasionally, but they're, they're mostly fine. Uh, next. I made a walk to school uh, golden shoe with my, one of my old trail running shoes. I just spray painted it gold and made a stand for it. And the class that had the greatest participation or the whole grade that had the greatest participation would get the golden shoe award proudly displayed in their classroom. Next. Uh, some other awards I've used, uh, which I haven't used a ton of, um, but they're, they're, they're super fun. The local motion, hot chocolate, the reflective wristbands were a huge hit in my school along with the tattoos and pencils. Next. Uh, this is something that has really brought out a lot of kids. It's been surprising. Um, I purchased some Hot Snaps uh, reusable hand warmers from uh, hotsnaps.com. And I've used these for, man, six or seven years. And they're boiled to to reset the non-toxic chemicals inside. And then when students arrive during a winter walk, I give them a hand warmer and there's a piece of metal inside, they snap it and it, uh, it starts a chemical reaction inside of them, which warms kids' hands. And they're so excited to use them. And they come to walk just because they get to use a hand warmer, which is kind of funny. And then uh, after the walk, I have to, to boil these things in the kitchen to, to reset them to a liquid state. But um, these have been very successful in getting kids out to walk. Next. Another newer thing I've done in the last couple of years, I've done story walks. And the librarian and I have worked together to choose books that have limited um, text and limited pages. And we contact the authors of these books. And then once we have permission, we uh, copy the books in color. And I've made some wooden stands that uh, we, 
we hang each page on a wooden stand. And usually I don't like to do any more than about 12, 12 to 15 pages because uh, the, the setup time can take a long time if it's more than that. Uh, but it, as the kids walk to, to school, there's a book they can read, um, usually kind of motions they copy uh, and they're, they get re really excited about going from page to page as they walk to school. In the, uh, the preschool group in my district, they'll also um, use the, the storybook route when I have it out. Next page. And this is something I haven't done yet, which is my next idea. Um, I've purchased through Teachers Pay Teachers um, gazelle, uh, kids yoga stories. And on my next walk, I want to do a winter yoga walk where there'll be a different yoga pose throughout the walk. And as students advance to school, they'll be doing different poses and they'll all be, re be related to a, a winter sport or activity. But I haven't done that yet, but I, that's my next plan for walk to school days. I think that might be the end of my slides, but my walks are, they're pretty basic, um, but I try to keep it fun. Yeah, I, I was uh, pretty stoked when I was uh, looking at your presentation earlier with the hot snaps. I think that's a brilliant idea. I'm going to see if I can make that happen through local motion it, um, in our support. I think that would be fantastic. Mary Catherine, I did contact hot snaps um, just to tell them I'd be talking about their product. And they said, as of right now, they can't sell their hot snaps by the box. <laughs> they don't have enough <laughs> so once they have enough um buy them by the box is less expensive yeah i saw that they're having supply issues yes and, and that's a lot for some reason <laughs> if i if i could chime in what's the other brand the ones that are disposable the hand warmers i forget what they're called i do you know that other brand that one you know Actually, if you put them in a Ziploc after you use them, they will last. Okay. Um, yeah, I learned that from a friend. He said you put them in a Ziploc, close the Ziploc. I haven't quite tested how many times you can reuse them, but in a in a pinch, at least it's nice to know those ones are somewhat reusable. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yep. I've never had one of these open up on a kid's hand. Wow. But the the makers of these assure me it's all non-toxic stuff inside. I have had some leak out uh, during the boiling process, but other than that, they're, they're pretty uh, resilient to even children using them. <laughs> awesome. Uh, a couple of more questions for you um, from Tom. Has um, either, um, either St. Albans or Central data on non-official walking days to see if the official ones motivate more students to walk to school. I haven't on an ongoing basis. I've done the walk to school tallies. Those, those two different days that you mark it off. And there was one year that I kept track through the whole year with students walking just to encourage kids to walk, but it wasn't a sustainable thing <laughs> to do. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, Mitch, what about you? Uh, a number of years ago, we tried doing it, tallying, um, not just on the walking Wednesdays, but other days. And it, it, it was a challenge. I got one classroom group that was very interested in doing the math around it, and that helped. It, it doesn't happen regularly. And I do crossing guard duty in the mornings and afternoons. So I do see most of the kids coming and going. So that's my way of sort of keeping tabs on the volume. Excellent. Uh, let's see, we have a bunch of questions in the chat. Let's see. Um, 
Bevan was wondering if um, the story walk and yoga walk are done uh, from the remote meetup or just as a walk around school. Um, the the story walk um, they are done from our remote location. So I meet, I have a location, it's a little park about a quarter mile away from my school. And before kids meet me at that location, I will pound into the ground as many stakes as I need or push into snow as many stakes as I need. And then I just, just staple the sheets on. And then I'm the last person to walk through and I'll, I'll pick them up as I leave. Or if I don't have time, I'll I'll go out during my lunch lunch break and and pick them up, and no one's ever um, vandalized my walk to school signs. So I'm pretty comfortable with them being left out all day if they have to be left out. Great. Uh, let's see. We had a couple people saying um, it seems logistically difficult to take attendance on a clipboard. How do you do this? And who tallies up the names in classes every week? Yeah, I I print off class lists. So the staff who come are generally staff who know all the kids. A lot of specialists come. And so all they have to do, they're not actually writing kids' names down. They're just checking off the kids' that are there and the kids are already organized into their group. So they know if they're in first grade, they go to the sign that says first grade. So all the first graders are, are together and there's staff who um, have been assigned to that group. So they, they know like they're with first grade, they'll, they'll be checking off the, the, the kids who are in first grade on their, their clipboard, whose names are already on the clipboard. Great. Uh, another one is, how do you get the hot snaps back from the kids? I think Eileen is asking. So. That, that can be a little bit tricky. I have lost <laughs> some because they're, they're just, they like them so much. But I have some, some buckets at the school. And so as they walk by, they just drop their um, usually cooled down hot snap into the bucket as they walk by. But occasionally, I pick up a few in the classroom that the classroom teachers have found. <laughs> so I do lose them very slowly, but I haven't had to buy any more for years. So most of them come back. How many do you do you get? How many do you have that you've got in the box? I have. I think I have around eighty of them. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure how many come in a box. Maybe maybe 40, something like that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm collecting ideas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, I think that is all the questions for Peter. Um, and if folks want to do hot snaps, they are right here. And I am now gonna go to Bevin. Awesome. Yeah. Can you hear me, Mary Catherine? Yeah, hang on one second. Excellent. Good. Just make something work that is not working. Should I chat while you make things work? <laughs> It'll take time. I'm almost there. I, um, that was amazing, Mitch and Peter. Amazing school champions. Thank you so much for all you've done. Really appreciate it. Awesome. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Um, as, as was mentioned, I am the regional coordinator for the Northeast Kingdom for Safe Routes to School for Local Motion, and which means that I and the other regional coordinators are here to help you guys and support you in what you're doing with on-the-ground logistics, leading bike trains and walking school buses, um, you know, selling the program to parents in the school. So really let know that we're out there as a resource. Our little team is growing. Um, 
and you can get our contact information from Mary Catherine. So I have been engaged with Safe Routes to School for just about 12 years. My first bike to school day was when my kids were in preschool. Um, so I have worked in Safe Routes to School as an instructor in um, PE teaching that was in Colorado. And also, but primarily I am a parent champion. So I've um, been that person like Mitch and Peter who are just on the ground doing all the nitty gritty. So I've been a parent champion at several of my kids' schools. So next slide. That's my kids biking to school. <laughs> there. Um, all right. So how to engage people and how to focus on equity, I think are two really important topics. And I'm relieved that I actually have something to add that to Mitch and Peter's great knowledge base here. Um, the million dollar question is, how do we get parents to want to take the time to do this and participate? How do we help them see the value in it? That's when we have to become salespeople. And it's, that's just such an ongoing process. Um, certainly getting the kids pretty amped up so they go home and beg their parents is helpful. And then I always say making it as easy, safe, accessible for the parents you know, is key. Um, you know, invite them personally. If you are out in the pickup line or you have a parent who does bike or walk to school, maybe they'll chat with some of the parents waiting in their cars or have a little postcard to hand out. My incentive to parents is coffee. Uh, I used to be able to find pretty easily, you know, in Colorado is in bigger towns, but find a cafe that would donate coffee. So either having coffee at the remote drop-off or at school once you get there. Invite the students directly. So um, at Charleston, it was really nice. I got to just go in there and I, I wheeled in my electric cargo bike. So that, you know, got my people's attention. And I went into each school and just said, hey, we have bike to school day coming up. And, you know, really um, inviting kids directly, um, getting them excited and, and talking about the why, you know, why is this good for our bodies and the environment? Really selling the kids on it. All right, so I've done several remote park and walks and remote bus drop-offs. Um, trying to think what I can add to what was already spoken about. So, you know, find a location. I've used churches. I think here in Vermont, you could use farms, you know, ask the farmer that's a quarter of a mile away. A quarter of a mile is a great distance. Even four blocks is worth it, I think. Kids just love it, especially if they don't normally get to bike or walk to school. Um, get permission basically for whoever you're gonna invite parents to go park on their land. Probably shouldn't do that without giving the church a call. Remote drop-off was way more complicated in Colorado. My first one that I did, I didn't have to have permission slips and we basically used a park and a place, you know, of course you need the transportation or the principal to make sure the buses can actually safely pull up and drop kids off. Um, I have done them where I had to get a permission slip from each kid. <laughs> <laughs> which was a holy, crazy logistical nightmare. But so um, what else would I say about that? I've had the principal lead it. Uh, um, I had a little marching band, a mini marching band lead the remote drop-off. And obvious, obviously the remote drop-off is the greatest way to be, to include everybody. So that really hits your equity. It's like everyone gets this chance to walk to school. Um, walking school buses, again, that's great. It sounds like in Vermont, you can sort of have that handshake agreement between parents where if a teacher, well, especially if you have a teacher leading your walking school bus, if you have a parent le leading a walking school bus route like Mitch does, um, sometimes in certain places, you actually might need permission slips. You might have to have that parent get a background check. I'm not sure about that in Vermont, but um, I always say, if you can get a handshake agreement between parents, hey, are you willing? to just let me walk your kid to school. So that's one thing, back to the first bullet point. If you have a parent out there who's willing to talk to some of those parents in their cars and say, hey, I'm, I'm willing to meet up with you. I know you're in a rush to work. I'm willing to meet up with you at the remote drop-off and walk with your kid. Are you comfortable with that? So that sort of informal parent agreement is always great. Um, delayed start. I don't know if Mitch or Peter have ever, I've never been brave enough to really harass a principal to ask that, but I know people do it and I think it's great. I mean, it's a special day. And um, I personally feel like if kids are going to make that huge effort to bike or walk to school, if there could be a delayed start on a special day, I think that's a great thing. You can always ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> and then if you can't do a remote drop off for your bus students, what we've done in the past is put out jump ropes and hula hoops and have music. And so they all gain to do something active and 
cheer and get a sticker while the other kids arrive. And then maybe you go in and have your hot cocoa, everyone together with breakfast. Um, so next slide. On that note of planning, I always like to point out you can make a bike and walk to school day as simple or as complex as you want to. It can be as simple, especially with COVID, as just sending home a flyer and saying, today is, this coming day is winter walk to school day. We'd love if you did it as a family. So then there's no COVID thing. You're not telling them to collect in a group. We're not hosting a remote drop off. So, um, you know, I've done very, very simple ones where I've just brought coffee and announced a remote location. And um, I've coupled it with like winter bike to work day, which I know you guys don't necessarily do here, but maybe you discover that maybe in your town, the best day for winter walk to school day is winter bike to work day as well. So coupling it with another event. Um, if you do want to get complex with your breakfast or you want to use real milk with your hot cocoa, you know, coordinate gracefully with the kitchen staff and ask if you could have a parent come in and warm up a huge pot of milk. Pick a theme. So one year we invited a special guest, Miss Snow White. And oh my gosh, she, <laughs> she was a character actress. And I'm serious. She was so embodying Snow White. She, like when people asked her who she was, she said, well, I, I am Snow White. And she held her hands like Snow White. It was like so full on. And so the kids that did show up, it was a surprise. And then they walked with her. And then I had to walk around the school as kind of like, hey, maybe next time you'll get to walk with Snow White. So incentivizing for future. So inviting special guests, I like you know, inviting a, a mayor, it's great, select board person. Um, partner with your communities. I don't know how much Mitch and Peter have done this, but I always tried to rely on uh, any outside community health groups, uh, groups fighting childhood obesity. Um, Rise Vermont is a great one that is definitely working on getting people active. Your town rec department. Um, the energy committees, your town energy committees I've discovered the enhanced energy plans that I've read, Safe House of School is mentioned several times. So they have an incentive to be engaged with that programming. So it'd be great to partner with them. And then one thing I've always been really interested in is the employer. I mean, why is the parent in such a rush to get to work? Well, it's the employer, right? So partnering, if, they're, if you're in a town like Charleston, where maybe a lot of people work for Ethan Allen, reaching out to that HR person, or maybe they have a wellness program and saying, hey, how can you work with us? So maybe your parents could be late on this day so they can really participate in this event. Communications, so using all those communication channels that you can think of. I'm glad to hear you guys, sounds like some of the schools here do have TV. Um, definitely have done the TV announcements. Use the PA, get your event on the marquee, emails, texts, newsletters. Um, putting stickers on kids, you can print those mailing labels. Tomorrow is walk to school day, you slap it on all the kids, especially the little ones, they go home, they'll remember to tell their parents. And then with a flyer, even if I use a beautiful, fun, colorful flyer, I've just printed that in black and white and then sent at home and in every kid's folder a couple weeks in advance. Next slide. And a quick summary on planning timeline. If you know how to do a screenshot, I know on my Apple, it's shift command three, if you want a screenshot of this, but I believe Mary Catherine, you'll probably share the slides as well. So you don't have to feel like you have to read this really quickly, but this is kind of my quick lowdown on planning. You know, what I do two to three months prior, setting the date, you know, conferring with the principal. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations amongst the regional coordinators about the whole principal blessing. And I mean, you know your school. Uh, I would say in my experience, I've never hosted a bike along school day without a principal blessing. Um, I love office managers. They're the ones who get things on the school calendar and get it into the newsletter. Start wrangling your help. Um, I do think parents, as a parent, I know there's schools here where the staff feels like they aren't getting engaged parents, but you know, someone like me, like Bevan, hey, why don't you go out there and talk to parents at pickup, talk to them, see? And I think with parents too, if you're just really specific, hey, do you wanna to go to the grocery store and see if they'll donate milk? You know, parents, they like, if you give them a task, so they don't think you're gonna ask them to plan the whole event, they're probably more likely to, um, help you out so wrangle some help make your plan pick a theme you know doing a disney theme oh my gosh frozen came out after my snow white so i'm sure frozen you may have some parents who love getting in costumes so you'd be surprised who you might have in your community that's would be dressed up as ella or 
the frozen girls, I forget both the names. Um, connect with our Safe Routes program, you know, ask Mary Catherine for what she has for stickers and giveaways. And, you know, again, engage the community, um, partner with people, find out who wants to help you with this event. One month prior, how am I doing on time, Mary Catherine? I think we'll do, I'll wrap up here, this is my, mostly my last slide. One month prior, finalizing your details, securing your remote park and walk location, getting your flyer designed and translated if need be, uh, working on your food, your volunteers, all that, getting the word out, visiting the classroom, some of the things I talked earlier. And then what do you need to do one to two weeks prior? Encourage your staff to participate or get your volunteers from staff. And then, you know, the day before. So that's kind of my quick timeline. You want a screenshot of that? I hope you got one. <laughs> and next slide, just some general maintaining momentum. And this is the other million dollar question is how do we make this sustainable? How do we make it normalized? It's so cool to hear it was Mitch that said it was not normal and then it became normal, which is so cool. Um, I always say, if you have any models at all, any families that do regular bike and walk, give, give those kids opportunity to be models if they're not super shy and like go into the classroom and brag. Like, yeah, I bike to school on the ice. Yeah, yeah, I did it, you know, and they get to go in and have their bragging rights and they become models for the other kids. Um, so connecting to school wellness, it sounds like Mitch, actually you have a wellness program at your school in Colorado. That was my connection for Safe Routes was wellness. So making the pitch about how it was an, a wellness initiative that happens before or after school. Um, connecting it to the Vermont culture, like Mary Catherine talks about being this, that we're doing the Vermont tough hashtag, like we're Vermonters, you know, we can walk to school in the winter, come on. Um, another great thing to kind of create momentum is at Charleston, I found out that a couple of the eight or, or older kids after walk to school day in the fall, they were like, oh, we're going to meet up at this one girl's house on Fridays and walk together. And I was like, oh my gosh, they got inspired to have their own informal walking school bus. So it's like, wow. That's like, and you could really encourage that with like in PE, maybe you could have, I don't know if you do any physical challenges in PE, Peter, where you have like pillars where they can, you know, they can get credit towards uh, getting physical activity for doing their group uh, walking school bus. Um, other things real quick, just, you know, connect it to celebrating winter, bring in something fun like skis or fat bikes, connect it to ongoing winter activities. Um, again, don't forget your community partners, <laughs> normalizing that we've talked about, you know, sharing those stories, um, institutionalizing it is like our end game, right? So how do we get the supervisory union signed on and the principals, anything you can do and that we can do to help you sell it. And then I want to talk about safety. I'm hoping there might be, there was some questions that came to us preliminarily about safety. Um, I just want to put that in there. You know, I think we have to take the safety head on. It's easy for someone like me or Melanie, who's also on this call, but we're like the crazy parents that would walk our kids or bike our kids down any road in Vermont. And it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily work for us to be like, well, we do it, um, but it does. I mean, we're out there modeling it. We need to go out there and say, this road is for everyone. And if you can slow down for a horse-drawn carriage or a tractor, you can slow down for kids biking, walking to school. Um, you know, but if parents do have concern, the most important thing is what are your concerns? Write it down, take it totally seriously. Tell them you're gonna figure out a remedy or a solution and, you know, do a walking audit of your environment. So there might be some questions about safety. So I just wanted to bring that one up and I am done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, so we have a few more minutes for questions. I wanted to make sure folks saw our resources uh, that we have put together for you. And I know Melanie has also done some resources and uh, provided materials. So what we have is um, Great. our website has our posters that we've created. We've created a bunch of them so that you can decide which ones will appeal most to your school, or you could just have a crunch to just keep putting a new message in front of folks. Uh, but we also have um, other resources. We have Bevan's timeline right here. I, I was like, this oh, is that's mine. <laughs> I stole it. Um, and then um, we have, you know, like winter songs you can sing on your walk. If you have, you know, littler kids, you enjoy that kind of thing. We have a, a sample of parents on home letter. 
a volunteer recruitment letter and flyer, um, how to do this event remotely or physically distance for schools who have those restrictions still in place, uh, as well as um, information on how to do a, a walking school bus in a COVID safe manner. We have a large a suite of resources for you that you can just pull and use. We also are offering for folks who sign up for Winter Walk to School Day, hot cocoa and stickers that we'll send to your school. Um, thanks to Veep for their support on the hot chocolate and uh, the state of Vermont for the funding for other resources. Uh, now I'm gonna let Melanie talk a little bit about um, materials. We have some really neat uh, ideas, I think, from, from them. This one? Yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> I did some research on places that were really cold, colder than Vermont. Imagine that. <laughs> Minnesota, Alaska, I even looked up in Greenland. <laughs> so, um, and I think that Vermont's doing a good job with their creative ideas. And I know a lot of teachers and all, everything I heard today was really creative, but I did put this list together. It came um, from Ontario. And um, I think that it's really specific to your school. Um, I, I'm a teacher, I'm in a school right now, as you can see from my background. And um, if there's any, you know, if you're a gym teacher and you know a social studies teacher or third, fourth grade teacher and they can do it in their class, you can see the classroom activities that are on here. Um, and I think that if kids are doing it in their class, then they're gonna start to think about um, going home and talking to their parents. Another thing that I've used, cause I was the Bristol team leader um, in Vermont, I took advantage of bulletin boards. You know, the principal let me use the bulletin board right in front of the lunchroom. And I had a big graph of, you know, a foot, a bike, a bus, a car, and a big hot chocolate. <laughs> and as kids came in, we gave them stickers. And so they were able to make the bar graph. And then we made an announcement over the loudspeaker. That was pretty fun. Um, and so I think it's really um, being creative with the visibility. Um, and so you can read this, these ideas from Ontario. There is like word searches, bingo, scavenger hunts. And so anything you can get into the, the hands of kids. But I know also a lot of backpack mail doesn't ever get to the parents. So taking that into account, reality check. And I know it's 11.59, but... Um, the power of creativity and enthusiasm goes a long way when we're talking about winter walk to school day. So, Thank you so much, Melanie. Um, and I will be making all of these available to folks uh, as we uh, go forward. So I think we actually answered most people's questions that they sent. Um, the rural school solution is a parking walk where you uh, agree on a congregation point and you move um, everyone there, and then they go from that spot to the school. And you pick a spot about a quarter, half mile away from the school so that it's easy. Um, and um, Bevan just raised her hand. Oh, re really quick, I'll just add about the rules, rules options. I know at like Twinfield, as a, they'll do a, a walk at school day. And so they do like these um, snow globes made out of ice and they do have a whole like event during the day and then at night with parents. So, you know, you can still walk at or around school. <laughs> awesome. And um, I have a question, I got a question about how to obtain crossing guards or people to help students get across tricky streets. And I think St. Albans has crossing guards. We have one crossing guard and he's a volunteer, retired gentleman. Uh, we don't pay him. <laughs> so yeah, we, we don't have a great program with that. It's just our, we move him to wherever it's most vital. Awesome. You know, do not underestimate the power of the interested person who has time and passion. Uh, they are a great resource. He's really good. Yeah. 
say something to that. Okay. Oh, and someone asked how much hot chocolate we provide. We provide enough for all, all the students in your school, even if we're not going to get that to kids. Um, we probably won't, but we, we, we work optimistically. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, any school at school events or off school events are, um, let's see, our resources for schools that um, want to do something remote are up to some more like a bingo event. But here is our resource for um, remote activities. You can do a kindness thing in your community. You could support uh, folks who need some help and you incorporate walking to school there. And um, you can do fun drives for miles walked at home. You can build a blizzard box for your neighbors who need it and drink, walk those boxes, you know, in a wagon to your neighbor uh, or to the local food shelf. Um, or you could just have kids make little snowmen in front of their houses <laughs> with like a kindness sign. Um, and then maybe have them do a tour of their neighborhood to see how many they can find. And uh, one of my favorite things is um, the sifter, which is like a treasure hunt. And you can have kids discover little treasures and take pictures of them and share them on a map and um, have that be available to their classmates as a kind of show and tell of their own neighborhood. So we, we are here to be flexible. We know we know it, things are a little challenging. So. For example, you know, I always find these little tree, silly tree faces where I put them on the, <laughs> on the sister map. And uh, uh, this is a lot of fun to do these things. You could do the snowflake hunt, like a bear hunt in people's houses, windows, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of options. Um, let's see. And um, our regional coordinators are available. I am available for support and help. And um, I see Bevan has her hand up as well. Sorry, that was my old hand up. <laughs> awesome. So um, I want to thank all of you for coming and a big special thanks to Mitch and Peter for taking time out of their day to come and share their uh, almost like years and years of expertise doing this work. Uh, and thank you for doing the work. It's important. You're seeing a lot of good things happening in your school. Um, thank you all. And I'm just checking the chat. Yeah, uh, have a good rest of your day. Please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.